targets that will get my trade to three to one, the, my max excursion of risk against me at any point in the trade. I try to get the trade to three to one or greater so that uh, when I'm in the trade, I'm making three times what my max risk was on the trade. So that's so I have to I have to look at all that, and I'm kind of adjusting it on the fly according to where I'm working in inventory. Now this is a fast moving market, so uh, I have to keep looking at that and be ready to respond because obviously the market is selling off. But the thing in the end, what I really like about this area is that the ES is vacated and, or completely ran out all the long inventory. And I, I know from all my experience trading with Cumulo to Delta, that's an area of price when I start seeing a full uh, major inventory grab environment taking place on the ES, that's a place where I'm very willing then to try to work in and build a dynamic position uh, in the DAX or I could be doing it in the ES itself or the Russell doesn't make any difference to me. It's just the it's the fact that the market has moved into a major inventory grab and an unwillingness of the uh, participants playing the long side to be involved with the market. It changes the physics of the market and it tends to create the market uh, or create a market situation that uh, you know we'll get a we might get a nice range extension, but then usually we get a pretty dramatic short covering rally. And just the opposite, if we're pressing highs, we've cleaned out all the short inventory, and then usually we'll get a pullback after the kind of the process plays out. So basically, what I'm doing in the end, I'm trading around a core position. I'm trying to build a core position. And then as the market's trading up and down, up and down, all the volatility, I'm trying to scalp additional trades around that. So overall, what I'm doing is, uh, is uh, working my cost basis to make it as advantageous as possible. That's very advanced capabilities of trading. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't just start trading that way. This is a, this is a byproduct of of being very, very comfortable with reading cumulative delta. I mean, I know when the market goes into, when the ES, which is the very dominant uh, instrument, you know, the ES is the very dominant instrument, whatever is going on in the ES is going to greatly affect all these uh, other, you know, all these other uh, futures indexes. So, so when I see the ES go into the realm of a major inventory grab, it cleans out all of its inventory as a result of heavy equity selling. I know it, that that puts the physics of the supply and demand situation into a very reactive uh, realm, meaning that once sellers that are deep in the money start covering into uh, a market range extending lower, two things are going to happen. There's smart money that's waiting to see sellers in the money, the winners, the winners in the money starting to cover, which will bring in some short covering. As the short covering starts coming in, that attracts other smarter money participants that want to initiate trade. And in this case, as they see the covering order flow start to hit, they will start to buy. So that process did play out here. Now, if this, we did have some very good short covering started here. We really never got any follow through uh, newly initiated buying. And it kind of makes sense at the moment, the equities were in heavy selling uh, campaign. Now at this point here, when we got the next major inventory grab, there's a little bit different situation. Let's take a look at equities when it was right at this area of price after we got another major inventory grab. Right here, a as the ES made a low, equities are starting to show us a slight dissipation in the selling, very slight. And then it did, did shift, and we did get some positive equities plots for a while, and the market rallied. So short covering started the move. Uh, equity slightly shifting to positive or showing 
the, the beginnings of that all in all attracted buyers into the market and the market then was finally able to rally. Once the rally starts going, then the next effect takes place. All these late chasing sellers, they're uncommitted inventory. They're not gonna hang on to these positions that they've just interjected in the market chasing that equity's weakness. As soon as the market starts working back against them, they're all gonna unwind. So all these sellers in here unwinding fuels the rally and the rally continues. So short covering, newly initiated buyers attracted to the short covering. Equities was slightly uh, changing its uh, uh, kind of, uh, you know, selling strength was slightly dissipating. And then we get short covering, fuels the rally, and the market makes a heck of a nice move. You know, where we trade 74s to 83s, 84 level almost. So, I mean, you know, that, you know, that's a pretty darn nice run. Now the market pulls back. Now we get to really see what this market's made out of. From this point going forward, we've settled back into the middle of our lower range. Now we're gonna see are these newly initiating buyers that came into the market with some pretty decent inventory uh, in the order flow, are they going to keep buying this market and try to support it? 